What's going on guys, Brian's here. Today is Monday, September 23rd, 2024. The market is currently open, so I will be breezing through this video. We are going to take a look at a zero DTE iron condor in which I currently have running. The reasons behind why I would run a zero DTE iron condor today. This is the live risk profile in thinkorswim, but I decided for purposes of explaining the video, option strats, UI, I think is a little bit more beginner friendly. The market closes in less than an hour and a half, so while I still have the position open, I decided to just hop on and record a quick video. An iron condor is the king of options spreads or option strategies in which you think there's going to be sideways price action. In other words, if you think a stock is going to be choppy, this is the perfect strategy for you. It is comprised of selling a put and selling a call and then buying a call and buying a put, creating wings. The way we would read this is the 5785 call is the strike that was sold to open and the 5800 call is the strike that was bought to open. You will often see that abbreviated as BTO bought to open and sto sold to open i like to just say this is the strike i shorted and this is the strike that i purchased it makes it easier for me when i was a beginner and i first started learning about spreads that's the way i taught myself and that terminology stuck with me i didn't waste time trying to memorize all of the acronyms this is the call short this is the put short this is the put purchase this is the call purchased the order is submitted at one time whenever you're opening up the spread. The strikes in which I chose, as well as the PNL, are not the relevant topics of this video, as it is more so about the general idea behind why would I run an iron condor or why would anyone want to run an iron condor today. I just created this an option strat to make it easier to explain for this video, but the spread was actually opened this morning. I went ahead and adjusted the cost basis. So if we head over to Think of Swim, this is the actual cost basis for the strikes here. So we can see that the put was sold for 450, the call was sold for $6. So if we head back over here, we can see that I just adjusted the cost basis by putting $6 in for the cost basis and then the 465 for the cost basis on the put side. So just to make sure that it, oh, four, oh, 455. So actually, let me just adjust that 455 right here. Made a simple mistake, there we go. And then let me just save this just to make sure it's updated and it matches more with uh, what's in thinkorswim this is also based on one lot which is all i have left running but you can size up and scale down according to your profile according to your account size for educational purposes i think it's always easier to look at things in terms of one lot i like to call these types of iron condors a one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio in other words the credit received is about similar to how much margin is being used and I think of it as either the underlying is going to remain within this range or it's not. And if it's not going to remain within that range, I'm essentially willing to lose the same amount of credit in which I'm looking to receive. So if I'm looking to make $300 off of this trade, I'm willing to lose $300. And that's what makes it a one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio. Normally when a trader runs an iron condor, the credit received is going to be much less than the margin that's being used. And that's because they're going for a higher probability of profit. And we can disregard these numbers right now as this is updating as time is passing by. So as the market is getting closer and closer to expiration, the chance of profit is going to continue to increase just because the current price of the SPX is within the range right now. But when I first opened this trade this morning, that was not the chance for profit. Now, hopefully this basic introduction to iron condors makes some sort of a sense. Let's get into the charts and let's take a look at some of the reasons behind why the trade. What I have right here is the zero DTE highest positive gamma strike. And this was also the absolute gamma strike for today. This is the Discord channel for Quant Trading App. This is about 45 minutes after the market opens. Cloax, how would I interpret the power strike at 750 and the absolute gamma strike at 700 sideways price action? And then we have another trader, EV, that asks, if the absolute gamma strike is at 725, does that mean it's a magnet for price at, at 725? So this is 725. This is our absolute gamma strike. This is also the strike with the highest amount of positive gamma. This is currently where the SPX was at the time. So 45 minutes after the market opens, this is where the SPX is. This is our absolute gamma strike. This is our highest positive gamma strike. That's what I marked off on this chart right here. This is what it's saying. This is the zero DTE, the highest positive gamma strike, and this is the absolute gamma strike early in the morning. 
at that time, the SPX was still here. Now, if I'm looking at this, my expectation would be that the market is going to gravitate towards 725. However, there's not enough reasons to think it's going to break past 725. So that already creates some sense of expectation for a rejection. And if I'm going to run some sort of iron condor, then selling calls a little bit above this strike becomes a thought that I'm going to have. I responded to Chloe by saying, yes, if they were closer together, then there would be even more of a reason to think so. And then regarding EV, I said, yes, but right now there are multiple zero DTE strikes that have similar absolute gamma. So these levels that I'm showing are coming straight from Quantrading App. So I'm just gonna pull this page up for a second. And this is where we can do a little bit more of further investigation. If you've never seen Quantrading App before, link is in the description. I am the lead developer at Quantrading App. So a lot of these tools I'm intimately familiar with and they are the primary tools in which I use before I make most of my trading decisions. This right here is the zero DT gamma exposure. This is the live time right now, so obviously we're not taking a look at the same profile from earlier. But what I'm doing is I'm turning on the absolute gamma, I'm going to turn off the net gex, and what we can see right here is there are a lot of strike prices with similar absolute gamma. Whenever we see this type of profile and we see that the spot price is in between this, price tends to be pretty choppy within that area. So that's why I answered EV by making sure to point that out. Yes, we know that this is the absolute gamma strike, but it is important to take a look at where are the other high absolute gamma strikes. If they're all within the same area, then the closer the SPX gets to any one of them, that will become the highest absolute gamma strike. So in other words, if the SPX was to drop and come down to 710, then this absolute gamma in the background is going to spike and this is going to be our AG strike. So in other words, I think of all of these high absolute gamma strikes as important. This is one, two, and three. All three of them are pretty important. When I see this many of them clumped up together, I like to think of it as the market is just going to consolidate and chop around a lot of these strikes. So when I'm structuring my iron condor, I'm going to structure it to cover this range. This is essentially what I'm looking for. And I might just give it a little bit more of a buffer or a little bit more wiggle room in case the market wants to poke above this range or maybe drop below this range. My expectation would be that it would retrace right back within this area and that's the type of price action again that we're having here today these are also the type of days in which i don't waste my time trying to look for a trending day or trying to look for some sort of massive breakout these are the type of days in which i would run some sort of iron condor some sort of iron butterfly and just leave it alone for the day. I like to use the one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio because the edge in this case is the gamma exposure profile, as well as understanding some sort of context. There were some catalysts earlier in the morning, but past the morning session, there wasn't really much left on the calendar. It's not like we're in the middle of some sort of an earning season. We had the PMI report that was 15 minutes after the market opens. There's nothing really left on the calendar here today. Tomorrow is the consumer confidence report at 10 a.m. So between today into tomorrow morning, there isn't really much of an expectation from a catalyst standpoint. And that's why it's important to be aware of the economic calendar as this builds context. It's not just because I saw the gamma exposure profile. It's also a little bit of common sense with a little bit of experience and then using some of these advanced tools to build conviction. This is exactly what ended up happening. Price ended up rejecting 725. We can see right here, the, the market was barely able to get over 725. That's not surprising. The power strike comes from this. That's a topic for another video. I've demonstrated the power strike in multiple videos on this YouTube channel. As we scroll through the channel right here, we can see the most up-to-date prints. The power strike is still pretty flat. The absolute gamma strike has been relatively flat for today. There's not much of a reason to think we're going to be outside of this range for today. When both of these are in confluence with each other, so the absolute gamma strike and the power strike, if they both match up, then I like to consider butterflies as they have more of a narrow, more laser bullseye type of focus in terms of if I'm targeting a strike. But whenever things look mixed in the morning, I'll just consider an iron condor. And lastly, I want to demonstrate something else in which I consider whenever I'm building out some sort of context and some sort of awareness for the week. This is the gamma profile for the week. This has been expressed multiple times on this channel. I will leave the link to the main video in which I showcase how I prep for the week in the description of this video. I highly recommend you guys check that video out. This is the gamma exposure profile for every expiration this week. I like to run this profile a few minutes after the market opens every Monday. So this is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. These are the five expirations of this week. It builds out a profile for me, and then I take these levels and I plot them on my charts, and it's coming straight from this 
gamma exposure profile. So this is the highest absolute gamma strike for the week. It is also the highest positive gamma str strike for the week, which is 750. This is our spy chart here. I'm going to turn on those levels in which I plotted manually. I'm going to turn off all studies and we can see right here, this is 750. It is a golden, it is a strike in which I'm making a color that stands out because it is the highest positive gamma strike, the highest absolute gamma strike. It is the strike that has the highest amount of open interest combined for calls and puts. It is a key strike that has over three confluences at that level. That is going to be an important strike for price action. Sometimes I make it yellow just like a couple weeks ago. This strike right here, 540, look at what happened. The market sold off, it could not go any lower, and then we exploded to the upside. When you have these strike prices that have three, sometimes four confluences at them, you want to make them some sort of a significance color or something different from what you would normally see because you want to be aware of that. 750 is an important strike for this entire week. That means if I see confluence with the SPX at the same area, I'm going to use that as an extra edge to enter some sort of iron condor, maybe sell some sort of calls above that strike. If you're just someone that likes to buy calls or puts, this is a reason to consider buying puts. That's not necessarily my style of trading, so that's why I ran the iron condor. These other rectangles on my chart are just notes that I'm leaving for myself to let me know where there's a lot of positive gamma for the week. So this green rectangle here, I didn't draw it out all the way to the end of the week because it ends up being too much on my chart, but this is just letting me know this is where the positive gamma starts. So that's why I have this right here. Positive gamma starts at 568, and then the positive gamma is pretty low past 580. So this is the range here for positive gamma. Then I have this here because this is letting me know this is where there's the most amount of negative gamma. I just extended this out just because price action is not in here yet, so it's not very messy. I try to keep my charts as clean as possible. If I were to actually display all the levels on this chart right now, we can see I have the SPX, I have the SPY here, and then I have the SPY on my momentum time frame, which is the three minute. And then over here on the ES, as you guys might have noticed, I ran the iron condor on the ES. These days I'm trading the futures a lot more. I analyze the SPY. I use the SPX gamma exposure more than anything. I use the SPY gamma exposure at the start of the week for the full week's profile. But for zero DTE, my preference is the SPX. And then for execution, I actually trade the ES. So this is showcasing to you guys. I look at all three of them simultaneously. The volume profile is always up on the ES chart. The ADD has been pretty flat all day here. It was declining earlier in the morning. So even though the market was going up, I wasn't really seeing there as much reasons of concern to think we would go much higher. My iron condo was short to the strike just above the pre-market high and just below the pre-market low. And, and for a trend and for a day in which I don't think there's going to be a trend, that's one simple tip if you want to run an iron condo, just use the pre-market range. The two-day anchored VWAP earlier in the day was all the way down here, so the expectation would be even if we sold off, the two-day anchored VWAP would likely act as some sort of support and the market would bounce. Again, the iron condor is open before all this price action happens. It played out exactly the way in which I expected it to. That does not always happen. So if price broke out of this range, and let's just say we were all the way down here, it's power hour, I would have closed the trade out. It wouldn't have even been a full one-to-one -one loss. So let's just say we were all the way down here. Let me just turn off uh, these other ones and just look at it in terms of a single lot. If we were all the way down here, I would have I would be down about $170 per lot right now. In this case, this is just one lot, so $170 relative to the position being up $270 right now. You guys can see it would have taken the markets to be down over a percent right now. So let me, so let me actually just reset these slices. Let's just see what a 1% drop or 1% move would have been. Zoom out right here. If the market was down 1%, that would have been bad. Let's use a half a percent right here same thing half a percent to the upside this is a little bit more realistic would have been down about 270 dollars relative to the 270 dollars i'm up right now so about a one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio i was using about a half a percent why half a percent because if the market is not really going to trends i don't see it being outside of a range of half a percent and the one percent move is more so on a trending day again i didn't think today was going to trend a recap on the reasons we're right around a bunch of absolute gamma strikes for the week so this is the spy here's our p1 here's our absolute gamma strike this is our second highest absolute gamma strike this is our third highest absolute gamma strike all those are coming straight from the profile in which i aggregated this morning these are those strikes here. Here's the high absolute gamma strike. Here's the second highest absolute gamma strike. Here's the third highest absolute gamma strike. This is the current price of the SPY when I ran this profile. It's right in between all three of these, right in between all three of these. So that's what's marked off on my charts. AG, AG2, AG3. This is just the highest, the second highest, and the third highest. So it's right within this area. 
It's also pretty close to the gamma flip strike. Price is going to be pretty choppy around that strike. So we have multiple reasons on the SPY to consider this. On the SPX zero DTE gamma exposure profile, it was also around a lot of absolute gamma strikes, which was addressed early in this video. And it was addressed earlier in the chat here about an hour after the market opens. We are also in positive gamma. In positive gamma, the expectation is that the market is going to be a little bit more mean reverting. It's not going to trend that much. It's more likely to gravitate towards the high positive gamma strikes. In this case here, the high positive gamma strike was pretty close to where it was. There wasn't really any massive positive gamma strikes much higher. So there wasn't much reason of concern to think we were going to go too high, at least until towards the end of the day. The ADD was pretty muted. We had a decent amount of rejections on the ES at these levels. This is our overnight session high here. This is our overnight session low here. So we had some sort of range established overnight. VIX looked too disgusting for me, honestly, to pay any attention to it today, but it was just a culmination of all these things. Hopefully by me just sharing multiple things in which I would look at at any given point, I can address or show you guys a different approach for how one trader might analyze the markets. And if you didn't know anything about iron condors, well, this is one example of how you may want to trade. On days if I think the market is going to trend and I know I don't want to deal with the stress of trying to scalp, I will probably just sit out for the day. I've always found myself gravitating towards iron condors. I've always wanted to be a better iron condor trader. I don't like managing them. At most, I'll give one adjustment, which means if the market was to go too far, I might just roll the put side up and then turn it into more of an iron fly. And then if the market continues to break out of any direction, I might just close the trade and taking a loss. The key here is I already know what my max loss is. I'm comfortable with the max loss. As long as I'm following my rules and I'm running these trades where I find multiple reasons to expect the choppy markets, I'm also using size in which I'm comfortable with. It means I can step away from the market for a few hours and then come back later in the day. Thanks for watching, guys. Leave a comment down below if you learned something, and I'll catch you in the next one.